I thought this was interesting. The Fever social media team flexing a little bit around Caitlin Clark writing it's a no contest. Every stat that Clark leads WNBA rookies in. There you can see the stats, points per game, assists per game, steals per game, three-pointers made, field goals made, and free throw percentage. I don't feel like they were doing that early in the year. Were they? Did they get a new? There must be somebody new over there. And also, I get the sense that Caitlin Clark fans are now a little emboldened because of how good she's been. Like, you look at those numbers, and those are the rookie numbers. They could have added to that, obviously. Not only does she lead all rookies in assists, she leads all players in assists. And she is almost certainly going to break the all-time assist record for a season. She also leads the entire WNBA in points generated, right? Like, points off of her assists or points that she scored herself. Uh, She's first amongst all guards in rebounding. Obviously, she's not first amongst rookies. Angel Reese has the, the rebounding on lock. But there, there's a lot of different things you could continue to pile on and, and add on and, and you know, point out that she's currently tied in MVP odds for second with Sabrina Ionescu behind Asia Wilson. Clark has been so good, it's impossible to ignore or hate on anymore. And I, I think her fans are now, like, realizing that. And the social media team is now realizing that, right? Like, because... There was this period of time where I felt like people were afraid almost of the backlash if they said something positive about Caitlin Clark or pointed it out because, like, you know, the the old guard, if you will, would come out and say, like, she has to earn it. She has to do this. Turnovers. Bah! You know, um, and now I, I think you see the fan base is like, nah, we're done with that. You know, that's in the past. Um, we don't have to to tiptoe around. I mean, I think you even saw analysts do it, right? Like when they were praising Caitlin Clark, they would always qualify it or couch it with, you know, but this person and that person. And, and one of the, the problems I do think existed at one point in time was that in order to praise Caitlin Clark, some fans would tear others down. Talk about how no one gave a crap or, you know, this person sucked, you know, whatever the case may be, which wasn't necessary, Right. And I think that led to some of the backlash when, if you had just pointed out the viewership that Clark had brought in, it's undeniable. And Clark's performance after, you know, a little bit of a, I don't even want to say a rough patch because she never played poorly. But once she got past the worst of it, um, you know, the the praise, is, you, you just can't, you can't get around it. You can't get around it. And I think that was was part of it. But you don't have to always like, Go out of your way to do backflips to avoid what is what is clear and, and true and plain to see. Like even now when I put out something positive about Caitlin Clark, I'll, I'll get people trying to, to hate on her somehow. They're, they're still doing mental acrobatics and, and gymnastics in order to do that. And it just doesn't exist anymore. And then as far as like the, the reaction from fans, when I say some fans – Caitlin Clark has a really large fan base, a really large fan base. And with every really large fan base, you're going to get some yahoos or some trolls um, or whatnot, right? I've seen it. Like LeBron James generates all sorts of discourse online and and elsewhere and has for a long, long time. Um, Steph Curry, you know, has his stands. Every every great player has their stands uh, and their fans that – rally around them and and get online and, you know, type up a storm and everything. I just don't know if the WNBA has seen something like that before. Not that they haven't seen great players before. You know, I've done my best to to honor the legends of the past and and learn myself at times and, and hopefully help other people learn at times as well. Like, you know, Caitlin Clark isn't the first rookie to thrive. Candace Parker was the rookie of the year and the MVP. Obviously, you know, Asia Wilson, when I mentioned the MVP numbers, is the heavy favorite for the MVP right now. Obviously, Diana Taurasi, who, who has been discussed a lot, is arguably the greatest player ever. I mean, they're, they're, you, can, you can do all that. But when you, when you look at the, the, you know, the support that, that Clark is getting, it's not different than we've seen in other big sports in the past. And, and I do feel like some of the – I don't even know if it's just the media – that has covered the league before or the social media 
that has covered the league before, some of them almost feel like at times fans of a band that got mad when the band blew up and got popular, right? Like, I, I liked them before they were popular. And when, when people have said more attention, more coverage of the game, well, that's exactly what's happening now. One of the, the side effects of more coverage of the game is more fan interaction, good or bad regardless. I mean, you get some of it with Angel, too, because Angel has a lot of fans. And Angel has some real hardcore supporters as well. But uh, I did think it, I did notice the tone change, I guess you could say, from the, the Fever social media team. And, and I think it's representative of Clark, you know, breaking all the, the tension down through her play, through the All-Star game, through the fact that we're about to, to get back to WNBA action again. Because they were, they were standing on business. The, the social media team. Though Clark um didn't love the, the look of her, her knees in the photo. If you saw that, um she she wrote, bruh, are my knees okay? And you can see how they're scraped up, which is a, a testament to she was probably playing hard, diving on the floor and things like that. Right? Like you don't get you don't get your knees and elbows you know, and then that goes to the other side of it too. Like people were like, "Oh, poor baby," about Caitlyn and various times in the past. Like I've always said, she was a tough girl from the Kennedy Carter hip check to any flagrant fouls to anything else that happened in the beginning of the WNBA. The physicality—that's how people try to test you. That's about you know, like great players have been tested like that throughout time. Oh, let's see how they they react when they're uncomfortable. Let's see how they react when we rough them up a little bit. Like that's not new. That's coaches will will hammer that home too. Coaches will, will will do that to say like, all right, let's let's make them uncomfortable. Let's let's see they how how they react to physicality. And Caitlin passed all those tests. And then I think the Tarasi moment, you know, you can go back to my video on that was a big like big kind of sea change moment that I, I think was significant when Tarazi embraced her again. I think the All Star game was another thing like that. Then there was the play where Dawn Staley had to get on the broadcast and was like, yeah, she's been heads and shoulders above everybody. She'd get high consideration for the Olympics now. And I think either, not only did they probably bring in some new people, but I think the Fever social media team realized, all right, we don't have to worry about the backlash of promoting our star player anymore. Let, let's go out there and do it. And again, they you know flexed a little bit with the, the no contest Caption, which is correct. You know, there's no contest for Rookie of the Year. Caitlin Clark is closer to being in MVP conversations than she is any Rookie of the Year debate. 